Welcome to English Worship Online Only again. That's right. We are online only again this week. I'm Pastor Jamie, and we care about you. That's why we do what we do. And so it, once again, with the rising number of COVID cases here in Jokja, we felt like uh, it's the safest and best thing for us to do is to provide an online worship experience for you. Um, man, so many people we know are testing positive or maybe their roommate or a close friend has tested positive. So we, we want the IEC and English worship to always be a safe place for everyone to come. Not only spiritually safe, but also physically safe. And so it's important to us that we, uh, we, we continue to provide that safe atmosphere. So I'm going to pray today for our worship, our online worship experience that, um, that you just sense the presence of God today with you. How many of you need, uh, a word from God today? How many need a touch from God? Yeah, me too. So let's go ahead and pray and commit these moments to the Lord. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you're the God who directs and protects. And so today we're trusting that you are giving direction and you are giving protection. So right now we just open our hearts to receive from you. Um, Lord, I, I need a touch from you today. I need a word from you today. So speak to our hearts through the worship and through the word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says together, amen, amen. Hey, let's worship the Lord together. Welcome to English Worship. Let's stand up or you can like sit down there and worship together. Let's go.
in Isaiah, um, like I want to like read, for I hold you by your right hand, I the Lord your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid, I'm here to help you. If you guys here, like feel that you have like the burden, have the things that like you're afraid, afraid of, of in the future, or like you have afraid like in the past sin, God have like promise for you yes. that He He will like give His right hand to hold you. Yes. So this is the great God that we serve. Yeah. This is the great God that we worship. the one who giving us the help yes, thank you. so why are we so afraid of our life of our future let's the, the rejoice let's the joy of God here in our heart and praising him more and more and we don't want to see the problem that we we have right now but we want to see God offer our problem
just like want to open our heart, want to open our life to you, that you speak to us. worship ya mm. family unpredictable warm gimana coba kayak love <laughs> surprise exciting but you're not exciting <laughs> I love when people hug me hanging a <laughs> I love just the like, community of hanging out playing pool before and after and then just get to worship together uh, the way the people welcome me I feel like everyone is like my family so yeah it's my hope god introduced himself through this community i feel close to god the family is not stopped in the service but it's continue in my daily life Welcome to English Worship Online Only. This is Pastor Jamie, and I'm so glad that you logged on with us today. As you know, COVID cases are rising here in Joe, Jakarta, and all over Indonesia, really. That's why I'm meeting online only this week. That's why we're meeting online only this week. Next week, hopefully we're back to on-site, but we care about you That's why we do what we do. So we're taking these precautions, making sure you and me are safe, all right? Because as you know, I want to continue this series called I Heart My Church. I Heart My Church. This is probably one of my favorite sermon series that we have done because I heart English worship. I mean, I love Sundays. It's killing me to not see you here this Sunday, to have to do this from my house instead of from the IEC. But I love Sundays. I love seeing you. I love our worship team. I love the greeters. I mean, the greeters are great, right? When you walk into the IEC, they say hi. When you go to the second floor, they say hi. When you go to the third floor, they say hi. When you walk into the, the aula, the, the big meeting room, they're there to say hi. I mean, you can't escape our greeters. Vanessa and the greeter team, you do a great job in all that. I, I really want English worship to become your, your church home, right? Your community of faith. I want to see you make a commitment to attend grow and serve at English worship. This year, make a commitment to attend, grow, and serve at English worship, Jokja. Two weeks ago, I started this series by sharing five reasons, five reasons why I heart my church. Now, these weren't my ideas, okay? This is what the early church did, the Greja Mula Mula. This is what they did, and so this is the kind of church we want to be. Now, I know we're not perfect, but these are the five reasons why I heart my church. Reason number one, the Word of God changes lives. Reason number two, everyone is welcome here at English Worship. Reason number three, we believe God answers prayer. Reason number four, experience the presence of God. Reason number five, we live missions. For the church in the book of Acts, the result of, 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 of committing to these five things, the, the result was God blessed and grew his church. Lives were transformed and changed. And don't you want to see that happen here at English Worship too? This is what Mike talked about last week when he talked about that the, the gospel changes lives, all right? So in Acts 1 to 7, we see the start of the church. And Mike talked about last week in Acts 8 to 12, uh, we see the growing church. And today, we look at this third part of the book of Acts. We see the missional church. We see a church on mission. Well, it finally got me. It 
finally got me. About two weeks ago, I started to feel a, a, a little sick, right? I got a little, little sore throat and a, and a, and a little bit of, of a cough. And then I thought, oh no, I think I got it. After two years of avoiding this, I think it, it, it finally happened to me. I tested positive for COVID. That's why I kind of got my COVID beard going. I haven't shaved since I tested positive, right? So I've spent the last two weeks basically in isolation and quarantine, all right? Now, now my symptoms weren't bad. I was just really bored, all right? That's probably the best way that I could describe my COVID experience. It wasn't bad. It was just boring, all right? So here's the crazy thing, is the day that I tested positive for COVID, like 10 other of my friends also got sick and tested positive also. I mean, it's so crazy how, how super fast this virus just spreads, all right? I, I, I guess this new variant, this new variant of COVID, what's it called, the, the Omicron, this, this new variant, it's 70 times spread 70 times faster or quicker than, than the Delta variant, all right? Viruses spread so fast, right? We, I mean, here even at, at English Worship, we went from planning Chi Alpha to English Worship, uh, and, and then suddenly everything was back online, all right? That's how quickly this vir the, the viruses spread. And when we read through Acts 13 to 20, it's amazing to see how fast the gospel spreads throughout the ancient world. When we read Acts 13 to 20, we see how quickly the, the gospel spreads throughout the ancient world. I mean, during the first century, most people lived around the Mediterranean seas and see, and they lived in these densely packed cities, all ruled by the Roman Empire. Each city was a, a diverse blend of, of cultures ethnicities and religions. And all of these cities were, were connected by a network of roads built by the Roman Empire. And so it was easy to travel throughout the Roman Empire, easy to do business, and ideas were able to spread quickly. Before the Romans, the Greeks conquered the ancient world, right? They unified the language. In Jesus' day, most people spoke Greek. Then, when the, Romans, uh, when the Romans came, they built roads to, to unify the land. In Jesus' day, all roads led to Rome. These two ingredients, language and land, made the perfect recipe for the spread of the gospel. Let me say that again. These two ingredients, language and land, made for the perfect recipe for the spread of the gospel. You see, up until Acts 12, uh, the Christian movement, or called the Way, uh, was mainly a homogeneous movement, meaning it was mostly uh, Jewish people or, or Jewish converts to Judaism that were putting their faith and trust in Jesus. But in Acts 13, it, around 40 AD, we see something significant happen. We see the first cross-cultural missionaries sent out, meaning missionaries uh, uh, were sent from, from their culture to reach people of a different culture. And here's what Acts 13 says. It says this, Now the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius the Cyrene, Manaen, who was brought up by Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called them. So after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Wow. I love the church in Antioch. This is the kind of church that I want to be a part of. A missional church. You see, I see three elements to becoming a missional church. How, how can English worship be this kind of church? How do we become a missional church? I see three elements for being a missional church. The first one is this, a speaking God. If we want to be a missional church, we need to know, we need to have a speaking God. Did you hear what the Bible said? It said, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, 
the Holy Spirit said. I like that. While they were praying and worshiping, God speaks to them. I like that. And I was thinking about this all, all week long. I've kind of been in quarantine and isolation. Like, like what, what are the different ways that God speaks to us? You know, what are, what are the different ways that God speaks to us? Well, well, number one, I think the most obvious way that God speaks to us is, is through the Bible, right? I mean, this is the most trustworthy way that he speaks to people. Um, we, we uh, everything we hear from God and others must be must be measured against the scriptures, like at Chi Alpha conversations. We're we're talking about relationships. Where do we get our guidelines and foundation uh, and beliefs about dating, love, and marriage? Do we just get it from family advice? Well, some of our families are really messed up, right? We don't want advice from them. Uh, do we get our advice from, from, from culture? Well, man, culture is always changing. And, and there are so many different cultures, right? Uh, uh, do we get our advice uh, or our guidelines from our friends? Well, man, that's probably the worst place to go for relational advice, right? So, so this is why the Bible is so important. It's the starting point and the ending point for hearing the voice of God. Another way that God speaks to us is through spiritual leaders. A second way that God speaks to us is through spiritual leaders. Something I noticed earlier this month when I was reading through the book of Acts to prepare for this sermon is that, that when the, the Apostle Paul, when, when he encounters the Lord on the road to Damascus, he hears the voice of the Lord and he is directed to go to the house of Ananias. Um, and, and now while Paul is having his vision, Ananias is having his own vision uh, from the Lord. It's, it's another one of these double visions that we see in the book of Acts. And the Lord tells Ananias that Paul is going to be a missionary to the Gentiles. All right. Uh, that, that it, I find this so amazing. That before God speaks to Paul about his future, the Lord speaks to Paul's leader and mentor, Ananias. This is why one of our goals for 2022 here at, at English Worship is connect with a leader. And it's so important for us to have spiritual leaders in our life. They're a gift from God to help us discern the voice of God. Another way God speaks to us is through our parents. A third way that God speaks to us is through our parents. Yes, God uses our parents to guide and direct our lives. What, are you kidding me? Yes, this is especially true in our context here in Indonesia, right? Parents have a significant and spiritual authority in our lives. The Bible commands us to honor our parents, but like all positions of authority, this can be abused and misunderstood. Do you think that's why the Bible tells us to honor our parents, not necessarily obey our parents? Hmm, interesting thought, right? It says honor your father and mother. It doesn't say anything about obey your father and mother. Even the Tebe says it this way, Hormatila ayamu dan ibumu. Yeah, man, I've talked to so many, uh, so many people my age who are unhappy with their life because they chose their parents' will for their life rather than seeking their own direction in life. And someday you will all stand before God to give an account for your life. And that day when you stand before God, you'll stand before him alone, not with your parents, and you'll have to give an account for your life. Now, please hear me, okay? Please hear me. I'm not, I'm not telling you to disobey your parents. Don't disobey your parents. No way. But as you grow and as you mature, you'll appreciate the wisdom and insight of your parents more and more. And while you're young, their direction and influence on your life is probably most important. Okay, so, so are we cool here? I don't want to get, get into any trouble with any of your parents or get angry messages from your moms or dads on Instagram. Wait, they don't know how to use Instagram. All right, they'll probably send me an email or something. I don't want to get any messages from them saying, saying, why did Pastor Jamie tell you, tell my child not to obey me? Okay, I don't want to get those, okay? 
Um, what I'm saying is one of the ways, one of the ways that God speaks to us is through our parents. Are we good? Good. Another way God speaks to us, number four, is through friends. Man, I'm grateful for the godly friends God has put into my life. They've impacted my life over the years in so many different ways. Praying together, laughing, hanging out way too late at night. One of the ways God speaks to us is through our friends. A fifth way God speaks to us, fifth way is our heart. God speaks to our heart. Now this can be a little tricky, and that's why the voice of God always needs to be confirmed by Scripture. But one of the most common ways that God speaks to us is to our heart. Have you ever had one of those moments when you're like, wow, that was way too good an idea to be my own. You know, that, that must have been from God, right? Most of the big decisions in my life have come from this peaceful inner feeling that I have. It's, it's not like an emotion. It's, it's something deeper. I can remember when I was 18 years old. And I was really praying about my future. And I was consider be, considering becoming a missionary. And that's when I felt the voice of the Lord speak to my heart. Saying, Jamie, if you're willing to go, I'm willing to send you. And that was it. That, that there was no writing on the wall. I didn't hear uh, an, an angel's voice singing. It was the Lord speaking to my heart. One of the ways God speaks to us is to our heart. One of the last ways God speaks to us is number six, through circumstances. Through circumstances. Now, this is a tough one. But your circumstances, your situation in life, can, can, can be the voice of God. There are times in your life when things just begin to line up a certain way that you know that God is directing your steps. Now, in all of these ways that God is speaking to us, let's always remember that the Bible is the starting point and the ending point for hearing the voice of God. All right, I need to say this again. The Bible is the starting point and the ending point for hearing the voice of God. The church in Antioch, they, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, the first element to becoming a missional church is a speaking God. The second one is this, a listening church. A listening church. God is speaking, but are you listening? God is speaking, but are you listening? You see, I have this incredible ability to, to like work on my phone, to play on my phone while someone is talking to me. And, and I'll even say, uh-huh, uh-huh, and, and act like I'm listening, all right? Anybody else have that ability, right? You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, of course. Or even worse, uh, I'll be in a Zoom meeting, right? And, and I'll be focused on something totally different, but I'll go like this, mm, mm-hmm. You know, I'll kind of nod my head as if I'm interested or, or like I'm listening, all right? I, I'm sure you've never done that, right? You're probably doing that now with this sermon, right? You're, you're watching, but your brain is somewhere else, right? It's the worst when my kids call me out on it, though. Like, I'll be on my phone and they'll be like, Dad, da 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 and, and I'll be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And they're like, Dad, are you even listening? <laughs> and I'll be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And so they'll totally call me out on it, but... But to be a missional church, we've got to listen to the voice of God. To be a missional church, we've got to listen to the voice of God. Because here's what it says that the Lord says to the church in Antioch. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I call them. This is what the Holy Spirit says to the church in Antioch. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for what? For the work to which I called them to. Well, what, what is the work? It seems like whenever Jesus speaks, he's always calling us to action. It seems like whenever Jesus speaks, he's always calling us to action. Go and make disciples. Believe and be baptized. Confess. Repent. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Serve your neighbor. Love your enemy. Forgive those who have hurt you. Wow, the kingdom of God is action-oriented, all right? Let's understand that, that the kingdom of God is action-oriented. 
I think that's why Marvel movies are so popular, because they're filled with so much action. Here's something that's always confused me. If the kingdom of God is action-oriented, then why are there so many passive Christians and so many boring churches? Ooh, can I say that out loud? We need to delete that off the video, right? If the kingdom of God is action-oriented, then man, why are so many of us so passive with our faith and so many churches ineffective in reaching out to their communities? The kingdom of God is action-oriented. So what has God called you to do? Right? What has God called you to do? Now, if you're confused about this, maybe we need to take a moment and, and, and stop and listen. Because remember, how, what was the, the condition that, that, the, that, that was created for the Lord to speak to the church of Antioch? It said, it said that while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, so man, if, if you're confused about, man, I can't hear the voice of God, or what is, what is God calling me to do? Maybe, maybe you need to get into that position of worship and prayer so that you can hear the voice of God. When I'm in a position of worship and prayer, man, I can listen better. God is speaking. Are you listening? To be a missional church, man, we need a speaking God. A listening church. And number three, passionate people. The third element to being a missional church is passionate people. It said this, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I called them. So after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Every Christian, every Christian has been sent out by Jesus to be a blessing to their community for the sake of the King and the Kingdom. Every Christian. Jesus said it this way, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. No one can say, I'm not called to be a missionary so, so I don't have to evangelize or, or, or reach uh, my friends and neighbors. Spiritually speaking, there is no difference between the, the missionary witnessing in their kampung and the missionary preaching in Banda Aceh. We're all called to go, even if it means to the coast next door or to the, uh, the, the person, at the people at our workplace. We're all called to go. A speaking God, a listening church, and passionate people. Three elements that make up a missional church. That's what I want to be a part of. That's what God is calling us to be here at English Worship. What's God speaking to you? Are you listening today? What's he calling you to do? Let's be a missional church. Let me pray with you. Father in heaven, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you are a God who's alive and active. You're speaking to our hearts. So Lord, we just want to take a moment to listen. To listen for your voice. And ask, what are you calling us to? What are you calling us to? Are you calling us to do? Who are you calling us to be? I pray for all those who, who are making a commitment to, make, to, to English worship, saying, this is my church. I want to be a part of this missional movement here at English worship. I pray for all of those that you would give them clear uh, clarity of vision, to hear your voice, to know what you're calling them to do, to, to make a commitment to attend, grow, and serve, to live on mission. I pray for my brothers and sisters today that that would happen, that we would be a missional church and we would be missional people. I bless my friends today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks so much for being a part of English worship. I believe God's got great things in store for us. God bless. 
Wow, what another powerful word of God from me. <laughs> All right, hey, hopefully you enjoyed the sermon and hopefully you're catching the heart behind this sermon series that, that I heart my church, that we want to be uh, a, a, a church that you can attend, grow, and serve at. And we want to be a biblical church, uh, the kind of place where you experience the presence of God, where you feel cared for, that you feel really empowered to pursue your God-given purpose in God's global plan. That's what we're after here. That's why we meet in core groups and young professionals, why we want to have worship together every week. And so, um, and so I'm so glad that you are a part of English Worship Online. All right. So, uh, hey, I want to go ahead and bless you. So go ahead. If you want to close your eyes or lift your hands or just stare at the computer screen, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and say our closing benediction, our closing uh, prayer today. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, I thank you for your goodness. Thank you that that you invite us into your mission. You don't you, we uh, we don't do mission on our own and you don't do it without us. You partner with us. You invite us to be a part of your mission. So today God, we receive that calling. We we want to hear your voice. We want to listen to it. And we want to do what you've called us to do. So right now, I bless my brothers and sisters. I bless their finances, that every one of them would know the provision of God so that they could be blessed, so they can be a blessing. I pray you bless their families and their friendships, that everywhere they go and everyone they would meet would sense the presence of God is with them. And more than anything, Lord, I pray you bless their future, that everyone watching online today would know their best days are still in front of them. Bless them now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And we all say, amen, amen. Thanks so much for logging on uh, online. Hey, stay connected with Instagram. You'll find out all the different announcements and activities that are happening here at English Worship. God bless you guys.
Thank you.